in today's video we're going to be taking a look here at the upcoming pattern we still have plenty of storminess over the next few days and there is some in the long range but we do see that this storm that we've been talking about for a long time will be coming to an end here there is also some severe weather concerns that we need to go over today as well as some tropical activity actually that are, the models are picking up on perhaps for the caribbean or even the us so definitely some things to talk about today also some hotter weather much hotter weather on the way later on let's dive into it and as we take a look at tomorrow afternoon that's going to be for thursday on july 25th what we see here is plenty of thunderstorms like i mentioned and showers still around for these areas across the south central states deeper south southeast and up into some of the mid-atlantic as well these areas are still going to be seeing it today on Wednesday, tomorrow on Thursday the 25th, and even for Friday the 26th, but that is kind of going to be the tail end of things. We do see that there is still some showers and thunderstorms up and down the Rocky Mountain Range as well. This has been a pretty common occurrence there as well. Once we keep going and move on towards Friday on July 26th, we see that those thunderstorms and showers, like I said, are still ongoing, but they are really dying down by Friday looking a little bit more typical as opposed to this very uh very stormy pattern that we've been stuck in four corner states and the rest of the rockies here we are seeing thunderstorms and showers like i said around these mountain ranges which is kind of common we are getting close to that monsoon season where we can see these uh, spikes of activity for so, some prolonged periods of time sometimes definitely some interesting storms out there uh, for Saturday on July 27th, we're seeing, again, the tail end of this. It's a little bit more exclusive here for the South Central and deeper South and Southeast, I would say. Not stretching up the Mid-Atlantic, not into the Ohio Valley, and not even for the uh, kind of upper Midwest either. It's mostly the deeper South areas there by Saturday the 27th. Again, still seeing some thunderstorms and showers around for your Rockies and some of the four corner states there also. By Sunday on July 28th, we continue to see these thunderstorms for the Ohio Valley, the southeast, the deep south and south central states, kind of again dodging that mid-Atlantic area. Um, but it's important to differentiate this from what we've been seeing. You know, this, this activity by Sunday is more typical for this time of year than what we've been seeing the models output. Um, a lot less flooding risk with this for these areas than what we've been seeing. Although for these heavier pockets, especially I'd say in this corridor here or maybe some of these areas in here where we've already seen a lot of precipitation we could still be looking at a pretty big uh, flooding risk that we need to look at but for areas further north that have seen a little bit less this is going to be a lot more typical for this time of year we also have this kind of stretching cold front underneath for some of the upper midwest and plains could feature some severe weather here for the day on sunday by time we reach monday on july 29th what we're seeing is a lot of that activity with this kind of what looks to be a funnel boundary uh, not really sure if it's progressing as one or not but we see this pocket of storminess is continuing to move further and further eastward for tuesday on july 30th we see that this is approaching the east coast again this storminess is really really prevailing uh, we have heavier pockets in here but again nothing too out of the ordinary here just a stormy couple of days uh, but nothing like what we've been seeing i would say the northwest here for Washington, Oregon, Pacific Northwest, or uh, better yet, kind of like the southwest in Canada there, seeing some showers and perhaps a crackle of thunder or two. Wednesday on July 31st, we see that the east coast is again kind of going to be the focus point here. It's July 31st, like I said. Also, for the time of year and the current situation in the tropics, we really need to watch these areas offshore where there's just some potential for some lower pressure to develop with some of these storms. Any of this could easily become some tropical activity at any point. By the time we reach Thursday, August uh, 1st here, what we see is, again, the eastern seaboard is kind of the focus. We see plenty of thunderstorms from Florida to Maine, so a very stormy day for the eastern seaboard. The four corner states still seeing, again, what could be some monsoon activity. In the upper Midwest and Northern Plains still seeing some of their thunderstorms here. Don't know why my pen got so little there. Uh, and then here is Friday on the 2nd. Again, monsoon activity. Great Lakes and upper Midwest. Southeast. 
but a lot more typical. We have these areas of moderate storminess, but nothing too crazy. What has happened over the past 24 hours on this model, which we'll replay it, is some tropical activity has crossed over Dominican Republic and Haiti and is now over Cuba on this model. As we've kind of been tracking the potential for something to move into the Gulf, we see now this European model is currently calling for that. Not really developed yet, but once it's over the open Gulf waters, I'm sure it would have a higher chance of development. We'll look at the tropics in just a little bit and discuss this particular uh, system actually in just a moment. The total precipitation is still looking pretty ripe in the southeast, but again, uh, most of this is coming over the next few days, and I wouldn't be surprised if we actually enter into a drier pattern after this is said and done, but only time will truly tell. Uh, we actually, okay, I, I have no idea what's going on with the pen, guys, so we're just going to work our way through this. That was crazy. Uh, we do see plenty of precipitation out west, probably near average, maybe a little bit below average here for some of the plains just to the east of the Rockies. Uh, and I would say near normal here for the Northeast and Midwest areas. As we look at this, uh, this tells the story kind of, we're looking at near normal conditions for the West, again, below normal for the Plains, highly above average still for the Southeast, but again, most of that coming over just the next couple of days, and then pretty close to normal for the Great Lakes and Northeast there. For the tropics, like I said, we're gonna look at this. Uh, again, I've been showing this every day, but we see these invests moving off of Africa and towards the Caribbean. That's definitely the focus point here that we need to discuss we just see a lot of this and what we're going to see is one of these it could even be this pocket here is going to move straight through here and kind of want to move into the gulf coast like this is the track that it takes today so let's just move through it there we go it moves over to Dominican republic and haiti cuba and then into the gulf where it kind of wants to develop before striking the texas or louisiana coast but like i mentioned yesterday i'll move this back to where it's kind of at its peak uh, the specifics aren't really important, you know, like August 7th, it could be any day. Um, and even the location, things like that. The important thing is that for this model to show this storm move through this area and eventually develop in the Gulf, it has to think that there's favorable conditions along this path. That is a much bigger takeaway uh, where we do see just a higher chance of development overall because of the favorability here, just looking really, really uh, nice and ripe for development. Now, let's take a look here at the temperature pattern. We have been much cooler, as you can see, for the east, uh, but we are warming up, especially as we move past August 1st here. We do see a lot more reds and oranges in the east prevailing, still holding on to some of this cooler air, though, for the deeper south compared to normal, although it's only about one to five degrees below normal, and they average like 90 degrees, so it's still going to be hot. Don't expect it to be like fall time or anything. Uh, we would need much further below normal temperatures to bring anything in such as that, but uh, definitely a little bit cooler than what's typical. Might be some relief, not entirely though. For the Storm Prediction Center outlook here, we're taking a look here at day one, which is going to be for today on Wednesday uh, for July 24th. And what we see is two very large general thunderstorm risk areas there in the lighter greens. And that's where we expect some general thunderstorms, but anything is possible. So heat every watch warning and advisory. We do have three darker green areas there that is going to be your marginal risk where we expect some isolated severe weather. And then we have your two yellow areas where we expect some scattered about severe weather to prevail. So certainly some possibilities of some impactful severe weather for some areas. For day two, which will be tomorrow on Thursday, July 25th, we do have two general thunderstorm risk areas there in the lighter greens once more. But again, anything can happen. You know, it's only general thunderstorms and no severe weather that is expected. That doesn't mean that is what's going to happen, though. And a lot of times we do see uh, some areas see some severe weather within those lighter green areas. Or I always say it, but even in the white areas, you know, some thunderstorms do happen uh, in unexpected areas. And this is some of the trickiest stuff to forecast when we have so much humidity and high temperatures across the states. Some unexpected things can happen at times. We do have one marginal risk area kind of there for the mid-Atlantic, like Northern Virginia, D.C., Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Southeast Pennsylvania. Definitely something to watch for. As we take a look at day three here, we have two general thunderstorm risk areas there in the lighter greens for July 26th on Friday. That is where, again, we expect some general thunderstorms, but please heed every watch warning and advisory. And every single day now, we've basically seen an upgrade because this yesterday was only a lighter green if you watched yesterday's video. And now we've seen an upgrade of a marginal risk there across the mid-Atlantic. Don't be surprised if for Friday somewhere sees 
a marginal risk upgrade where some stronger storms are expected. So we're going to be on the lookout for that, of course, over the coming days. Anyway, with all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.